Hey, it's me, Topi Inc. What were you expecting? An alternate reality where pills control everyone? Well, we also have that, but probably shouldn't ask why. <laughs> Welcome to We Happy Few. This is like the best story that I've ever seen in a video game ever, and I'm kind of obsessed with it right now, so I have to make a video on it. And that's the reason why that this video is most likely longer than others. So let's change the music, shall we? Yeah, that's, uh, that's good. That's, uh, let's go. This game takes place in Wellington Wells, a made-up place in England. It also takes place in 1964, in an alternate reality where Germany won World War II. After Germany won, they took over England, but Wellington Wells was able to keep Germany away by making a trade with them. Anyone in Wellington Wells who was under the age of 13 was sent to Germany on a train, but that didn't exactly make citizens happy, so they did what people describe as the very bad thing. The game never explains what this is, and neither does the internet. While the event is never truly called anything in the game, it has become the name that the community uses to refer to the devastating in-game event that is integral to Wellington Wells' past. Yeah, but what is- This very bad thing was so upsetting that people in Wellington Wells started feeling very sad. So then they created a pharmaceutical drug called the Joy Pill. This pill makes people so happy that everything unhappy in the area, the user will be oblivious to. The Joy Pill also makes you forget your past entirely. Which is pretty funny when you think about it, because that was Hitler's plan anyway. <laughs> Overall, it's not a very fun thing to take, but unfortunately it's illegal to not take, and anyone who refuses joy is called a downer. Being a downer is punishable by death, and it's completely legal for civilians to chase after and beat a downer. It's not only legal, but it's encouraged. Uh, Alright, let's talk about characters. Throughout your adventure, you play as three different characters who are all balanced. There's not one that's better than the other, but let's start with Arthur. He is known, or at least for me, what he's known for is being extremely fast, and uh, most other things he kind of just evens out on entirely. Then there's Oliver. Uh, he has diabetes. I'm not kidding. This, this is an inside joke for anyone who's confused. I wasn't able to get any clips of Oliver having diabetes, but um, basically you just have to monitor his blood sugar in the upper left of the screen and take certain syringes if it gets too high or low. Ollie is also the mad Scotsman, alright? You may have a wee headache later. Also, Joy might make Oliver vomit, and he also might be the slowest character in the game, but he's also amazing at combat. <laughs> oh, that really takes it out of your shoulders. <laughs> There's also crafting in this game, but it's not like a survival game where you have to craft certain things to proceed. It's actually sort of a mission game, but uh, whenever you gather resources, you can use those to craft things that'll help you do those missions. Some things you can't craft on foot, and you need a workbench to do, and other things you need a chemistry set to do. But um, Oliver is actually amazing at using the workbench, and uh, he can't use the chemistry set to save his life. It's sort of a trade-off. I'll give it a whirl. The last character is Sally. Sally's different because she starts off as like a really weak character, but then you can make her into the strongest being on planet Earth. Sally is the chemist that excels at her ability to use the chemistry set, but lacks the ability to use the workbench. So it's sort of like Oliver, but the opposite. Sally may be terrible at combat, but she can use syringes to increase her maximum health and stamina permanently. So all you really need to do is stack this up a few times as a workaround. Sally is so bad at combat that her against three plague white trolls is actually a freaking fair fight. In We Happy Few, obviously you can die, but you can use Roses of Gilead to make healing bombs and heal yourself. These are stored in the, your first inventory slot along with all your other healing items. And this inventory slot is where it stores all your drugs, or that's that's what the game calls consumable items that give you effects, such as flashes that uh, make you faster for a few seconds. This inventory slot stores all your gadgets, such as flashlights and grenades. And lastly, this stores your edible items, such as food and drink. Throughout the game, you have to constantly eat whenever you're hungry, drink whenever you're thirsty, and sleep whenever you're tired. You don't actually die from not doing any of these things, but your endurance suffers very negative effects. And keeping healthy with all these things make your endurance have a positive effect. Now let's talk about some gameplay mechanics, like the skill tree, in which you probably want to max this out because it has a lot of useful things in it. To get materials for crafting, you have to search the environment, or even search bodies that you've knocked out or even even killed like the rotten downer you are. All right, what did you have? Da -da 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 I want to talk about Second Wind for a second, because this is personally my favorite uh, game mechanic in this game. Basically, Second Wind is that if your health drops to zero, you don't die, you just enter Second Wind mode, which turns your health into a timer, and every second it goes down, and every time you take damage, it will also go down depending on how much damage you take. 
If that reaches zero, then you die. But if you're able to heal yourself before it reaches zero, then you live. But you can't actually make healing items while inside of combat, so you have to make them before. Otherwise, you'll be frantically running around like, I don't have a healing bomb, I need to search around for one. Now let's talk about the joy pill for a moment, because taking joy doesn't actually give you a game over, it's actually a strategic move that has pros and cons. An obvious positive to taking joy is that you blend in with the crowd and you won't set off any alarms through the traps that will detect you if you're not taking joy. A minus, though, is that a meter builds around the joy meter called memory loss, and if that fills up all the way, then you get a memory loss episode, which basically makes it to where you are... you look just absolutely terrible, and people are so worried about you that they report you. Another similar thing happens whenever joy wears off. This is called a joy withdrawal, and it is literally just the same thing except as a different icon. It's better just to hide during the duration of both of these whenever they happen. And uh, let's talk about hiding for a second, because there are different things in the map like closets and trash cans that you can hide in, and the game won't let you hide in them if you are seen, but if you are in there, enemies will literally never check them. So as long as you're in one, then you're guaranteed to be completely safe. And what's also bad is that Joy is in the tap water, so you need to make a water filter to filter it out. I hope I don't throw up. Also another thing, if you take too much Joy, you can overdose, and that makes it impossible to attack. You just kinda... Yeah. Also, while we're kind of jumping around for a second, the inventory of objects that you're carrying doesn't actually depend on how much space you have, it depends on the weight of each object. And if you carry too much, you become overburdened, which basically means that you can't run or jump, and you're way slower until you drop things. Either I've got the bloody weight of the world on my shoulders, or I need to drop a few things I'm carrying. Alright, most fun part of this video, let's talk about the various common enemies in We Happy Few. Alright, so first off we have the Wellies. Now, these people are the people who are just so happy about joy. They are mostly effective when there's a multiple of them, but these people hate it when you run, crouch, and jump, and it's very annoying. Then there's Grandma. She's basically like the Wellies, but she doesn't actually attack. She just stands in one position and screams over and over again, drawing a lot of attention. Heavens! That's better! Thought I'd have to scream! Then there are the wastrels. These are people who have decided that they don't want to take joy, and they're kind of stranded outside the city, lying in the garden districts. Wastrels actually really don't care if you do anything. They- you can run around, carry a weapon, jump, crouch, whatever, as long as you just don't do anything to them. And as long as you wear the right clothes around them. You don't want to remind them of the people who drove them out of the city. Oh, he doesn't like Nice wearing... clothes? Want to trade? Then there's the Head Boys. They're kind of a criminal organization in the Garden District. You're not my neighbor! Then there are the Plague Wastrels. They're like Wastrels, except they've contracted the plague. These enemies are hilarious, because combat in this game has three different moves, which is attacking, blocking, and the block-breaking push. However, the Plague Wastrels only attack, but they do a lot of that, I guess. <laughs> The bobbies, police officers, or constables, whatever you want to call them, they are the people who bring justice to Wellington Wells. I'll cheer you up, alright! The doctor has a saw and can smell anyone in the area who is not taking joy. Relax! What <laughs> you? I'm good fooling around! Ooh. Is this where the doctor went? He deserved this. Oh no, he's gonna throw it. The red constables are like the normal constables, except they are way more powerful than them, and you almost never want to go against them. Why is he just standing? And lastly, there's the jubilator. It's a machine that goes around and sprays joy at you. You take your joy in it. And that basically covers everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye. -bye.